See how parking has changed for students on campus. Learn about the lifestyles of residents in the new housing complexes. And hear about an adventurous op option open to Tucsonans who want to stay fit. All this and more tonight on Wildcast. This, this is Wildcast. Is Wildcast. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nafarrate. And I'm Danielle Carpenter. Thanks for joining us tonight. More than 60 people participated in 9-11 tribute display at the Southern Arizona VA Healthcare Center this last Wednesday. Several senior corps programs mobilized along with the community members to hang flags along the medical center's 6th Street gate. Upwards of 3,000 flags adorned the gate to represent the lives that were lost in the attack. We have a lot of volunteers that come out and help us. We have crowds of people that come by, ask to help stop and um, put flags on here. So it's just been a, um, a nice way to involve the community, um, neighborhood around here, and volunteers from the hospital, and just kind of all over. This was Senior Corps' second year hosting the event. They plan on presenting a similar event next year. With new construction all over campus, the Parking and Transportation Department has implemented some major changes, leaving students wondering where to park. Wildcast reporter Serena Nafarate has insight into the issue. Construction problems around campus have already become pretty apparent for students driving to school every day. In fact, a new soccer field for the Student Recreation Center and construction for a new research building have caused the university's parking and transportation department almost 800 parking spaces. Marketing director Bill Davidson explains a little more about all the changes students should look forward to this year. As the campus um, grows and new buildings are put up, um, many times the, the parking lots are chosen to be uh, you know, the foot for those. So we, we end up losing um, you know, some spaces. Now this year, uh, because of some of those spaces that we lost, we're uh, planning to implement and build a new um, garage that's going to be on 6th Street, right next to the Circle K. That's the South Stadium garage, and that will be, um, up, well, be constructed this year. Prices have also changed this year up an average of $12 since last year. Parking garages are at most $600. Despite the changes implemented in parking garages and parking lots, parking and transportation has future plans and programs already in effect that benefit the student. Yeah, well this year we have um, kind of a rebranding of our CapTrans shuttle service. We um, implemented a GPS tracking system on the shuttles so that a uh, student can download a little app to their smartphones and follow the shuttles uh, wherever they go around campus. So if you're standing at a bus stop and wondering when the next one's coming, you can just look at the app and it'll tell you exactly what time it will come to your stop. And it also has a real-time map uh, included with it too so you can see where the shuttles are at all times. Wildcats are still a little weary of the changes. But student Max Wingert looks at the bright side of things. Um, in general, I wish I could encourage people to drive less, I think is my, my general hope. So if anything, I would encourage raise that damn price and get people riding their bikes and walking. It's good that there's not guaranteed parking. Because I think it encourages people to use public transportation. It encourages them to use green transportation. Ride your bike, walk, run, uh, carpool. Reporting for Wildcast? This is Sarina Nafarrate. Yeah, parking can be a complete pain sometimes. That's why I walk this semester. Good idea. <laughs> the American Red Cross Southern Arizona chapter is offering safety classes that might be useful for many different UA health medicine and science majors. They offer first aid and CPR, lifeguard training, nurse assistant training, first responder training, and even babysitter training. The Red Cross will also have multiple bluff drives on campus. Dates and locations will be announced. For more information on these beneficial classes, check out redcross.org slash take a class. Elcon Walmart on Broadway hasn't even been open for a week, but it has been fighting for a liquor license the entire time. The state... 
The State Liquor Board made the decision last week to prohibit Walmart for applying for a liquor license for one more year. Walmart had previously made a deal with local neighbors that it would cut its hours and not sell ammo for 30 years, as long as the store could sell beer and wine. While the real retailer does not have alcohol on its shelves, store employees say they are confident the negotiations are in the works. But right down the row in the same, same shopping center is Target, which does sell liquor. Stay with us after the break for a look into week's upcoming weather. I'm Derek Williams, the former U of A Wildcat. You're watching UA TV. Don't change the channel. And now we'll be turning over to weather reporter Shay Sorensen for this week's forecast. Good evening, Wildcats. There isn't much happening tonight as the monsoon comes to a close, but today in Tucson we had partly cloudy skies, while most of the isolated thunderstorms stayed toward the east. The high temperature stood at 100 degrees this afternoon, leaving us a few degrees above our normal high for this time of year. The record high for today is 105, and that was set back in 1956. Tomorrow you can expect mostly sunny skies with a high of 99. Temperatures for the rest of the week will bounce one degree above or below 99, and sunny skies are forecasted for this weekend. A tropical cyclone near the Gulf of California has a 30% chance of formation. If the winds are just right, the moisture could be driven into the southwest by next week, giving us a chance of showers. That's all I have for you, Wildcats, and have a wonderful week. Thank you, Shay. The three student housing developments that were under construction last year are finally open. Wildcast reporter Danielle Carpenter has the inside scoop on life in these new complexes. The anticipated new off-campus housing developments are finally here. The retreat, the level, and cadence have made their debut this semester, and they have filled up quickly. There's always something to do here, whether it's wanting to just hang out with someone or wanting to go to the pool. There's always something going on. It's great. Yeah, this place is amazing. The pool is crazy beautiful. I love it. I love the house. I love everything. These housing developments come fully furnished and the students are only in charge of bringing their decorations. Yes, it was. I, I brought, all you really had to do was bring bedding and all the decorations and all that kind of thing, so that was really nice. These housing facilities offer pools, gyms, spas, and study areas for students. These new housing developments are one of the most expensive options for off-campus living, but many of the residents say it is worth the price. I think it's so worth it, and it's, it makes you feel very safe. It's so nice. Everything is just what you need. Everything's here. I definitely think they're worth it because the kids that are here take care of their space and are very respectful of it, and even though it is expensive, it's, it's close, so it's nice. Reporting from The Level, I'm Danielle Carpenter for Wildcast. The retreat is said to have a two-year waiting list already, and The Level is at 98% capacity. There are, however, three more off-campus housing developments expected to open in summer 2014. The Next, The Hub, and The Junction are estimated to be ready by July. Since they will be a little further from campus, they are rumored to be a bit cheaper, but still just as luxurious. The world of college sports has been staring lately over whether student athletes should get paid for the contributions. Wildcast reporter Chelsea Mo has the details. Johnny Manziel, quarterback for Texas A&M, sparked a controversial subject for sports nationwide. Many people believe athletes shouldn't be paid, while others believe different. 
Well, first we got to realize how much money NCAA makes off of college athletes. I mean, I read something the other day where it was estimated the NCAA made a billion dollars this uh, this past year in, in revenue. And the people who don't get paid are, are the athletes. It's this controversy is a hard one to find a solution for. So many people have so many different views on whether athletes should reap benefits or not. And should the money go to other places within the U of A campus? I'm kind of against it, not just U of A athletes, but like NCAA athletes in general, because they're already getting paid by scholarships, which most of the students here have to pay for already. While some believe that student athletes should be paid, others don't see how it's feasibly possible. The NCAA as a whole makes six billion dollars annually. The players don't see this money, however, even as they risk career-ending injuries. The other side thinks paying student athletes pushes them away from education and scholarship is enough. There is also Title IX, which says if you pay one athletic group, you must pay them all. I mean, you can't just pay these people. You have to pay the women's sports. You have to pay the the, the other men's sports. They don't make so much money, and. If, if the NCAA ever, NCAA ever came to that standpoint, I don't think they could afford it financially to pay every single student athlete. And I don't think also that they would ever get passed in court where they could just pay college football and just pay men's basketball. Reporting for Wildcast, I am Chelsea Moe. I would love to play sports in college and get paid. Yeah, it looks like I have to start getting into sports. Yeah, right? <laughs> After the break, hear about one athletic club that's gotten a head start on training. Hi, right, David Hassel off the hop. Get off with UATV. Stay tuned. Don't change the dial. People may tune out someone they see on a median trying to sell newspapers. Those extra few hours of having to swipe your cat card to get in at night might be keeping non-U of A students out of the library. And while some are traveling to Mexico for cheaper gas, others are forced to pay those high prices at the pump. Students and parents are always invited to come cheer on the Wildcats. We'll see you back here next week for another edition of Wildcats. One club on campus that has already been getting the word out on their activities this year is the Tri-Cats. It's a club you don't hear about much, but these athletes work year-round to prepare for the triathlons. The Tri-Cats have been cycling on the mall in front of the student union to recruit new members, in addition to their twice-a-day workouts. Students of all athletic ability are welcome to apply. The Tri-Cats also put on fundraisers not only to benefit the club, but to introduce the community to multi-sport races and raise money for various causes. To apply online or for to get more information, visit ArizonaTriCats.com. Their first triathlon is coming up on September 22nd in Tempe, Arizona. Tucson seems to have all sorts of new fun ways to exercise emerging. Along with Tucson Circus classes, locals also have a brand new trampoline park in town where they can have some fun while exercising. The park is called Get Air and is located downtown just off Tool Avenue. It is $11 for the first hour to jump and $6 for an additional hour. Tucson Circus Art offers circus classes to anyone looking for an exciting way to gain confidence and work out. Wildcast reporter Katia Hall has more. Tucson Circus Arts is giving Tucsonans an opportunity to overcome their fears and work out their mind and body through circus activities. A lot of people come because they are afraid of heights and they're like, I want to get over that, so I'm going to do aerial. Once you get up past a certain point, you're like, wow, I'm really high up here. And I didn't realize how much that would freak me out, and so and then I gradually got over it. Most of the time, these fears restrict a person from doing the things they love most. It's more like they see us and they're like, that's impossible, like I can never do that. And then they do it and they're like, I can do anything. Noam Spencer, PhD in Insight Therapy, believes that you can get rid of your anxieties through exposure. Exposure by far is the most potent medicine known to psychology. You can definitely get hurt and more, I mean the ones of us that are more advanced have gotten hurt. But as far as kids or students, like we've never had an injury. We use mats, spotting. Definitely a lot of building up to skills. Not only do these classes operate as a way to fight your fears of height, but they also serve as an alternative to the gym. Yeah, aerial is a really fun way to ex 
exercise. <laughs> and in fact, I mean, all our classes, hand balancing, it's all really good conditioning. It's, and it's more fun, to me, more fun than going to the gym, lifting weights. It's the ultimate total body workout. I mean, you can't lie, you can't really cheat. And it's fun, it's really fun. I've gained a lot of upper body strength. <laughs> I was really weak. I learned that in my first class when I couldn't even climb ropes or anything like that. So I gained that and um, I guess just more confidence in like being able to do things that look kind of impossible when you first see them. It can be kind of intimidating at first. Like when you come in and people, you, the first thing you do when you're stretching, you do splits and half the class can go all the way into their splits. It's a little intimidating, but it's really fun and everybody's really accepting. Reporting from Tucson Circus Arts, I'm Katya Hall with Wildcast. And now we'll be turning over to sports reporter Chelsea Moe for this week's sports rundown. Chelsea? Hi guys. The University of Arizona women's soccer team moved to 4-1-3 on the season after picking up a 6-1 victory over Southern Utah in a 2-0 loss against Texas Tech. Meanwhile, on September 15th, Emily Harding, a women's volleyball player, finished with a match high of 21 kills to go along with 13 digs. That's not all. After Hawaii won the first two sets, Arizona turned a 21-21 tie into a 25-22 victory in the third set. The Wildcats return home for the Wildcat Classic on Friday, September 20th. They'll host Loyola, Maryland, Wofford, and UC Santa Barbara in the two-day event inside of the McHale Center. It was a good week for football fans. The Wildcats won 38-13 against the UTSA Roadrunners last Saturday night. The majority of U of A's scoring came from the first quarter alone when Grant caught a 13-yard pass from B.J. Denker. Kadeem Carey had 27 carries, ran 128 yards, and had two touchdowns. What a night. Well, that's all for this week. Back to you, Serena. Thanks, Chelsea. As always, thanks for tuning in to Wildcast. You can watch us anytime online at uatv.arizona.edu or on our YouTube channel, UATVCH3. We'll see you next week for another edition of Wildcast.